last time on the Moore and Connolly Football Show. Drinking? Probably. It's probably the one. <laughs> See, that's what I was going to say, Mike. But See, that's Brady, where... always, Brady always does that, doesn't he? That's like his go-to Like when he does the talk show rounds. I don't know if you've seen this, but far from being the greatest most accomplished athlete in the modern history of sports he's like the, the quickest drink of a pint known to man i don't know if you've seen this tom he can do that thing where he opens his gullet and drops it down and he does it in like 0.1 of a second it's madness so there's great videos out there um so maybe yeah mike if that's your thing you know you, yeah i've known patrick edward brady has a bit of an <laughs> irish ring as well <laughs> it does I, i've never um sorry no i i knew one person that could do that and it was a devastating skill just it's just unbelievable <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Moore and Connolly Football Show once again. My name is Tom Moore, your humble host. And joining me, as always, he's the greater curator. He's the man with the big cheese. It's Ollie Connolly. Ollie, how are you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm not bad, mate. I thought I'd take it back to one of my ad-libbed introductions, like back in the old good MCFS days. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. <laughs> you see, the show always starts, Ollie, with kind of, I think, like a a veiled contempt in your tone of voice. I always feel that a little bit and then it gets better. I always heat up by like the 25 minute mark. <laughs> exactly. So, you know, just, just go with us people. So welcome to the Moore and Connolly football show, the antidote to the normal NFL podcast where Ollie and I talk equal parts NFL and nonsense. And we're delighted to welcome you into the MCFS club once more. And on today's show, we're going to be talking NFL news again. Uh, And that's going to be mixed in with a little bit of nonsense news, as is usually our style. We might hit some Legends of the Week, but we're going to save the most time for our game show this week. And we do a game show every week. And this week, it's who wants to be a millionaire with a bit of an NFL slant. So we're going to leave the biggest chunk of time for that. And then we'll finish with possibly a bit of Tom out on a limb if we've got time. And then some listeners' questions. I know we've got one there. But before we get going... Mm-hmm. We need to welcome, as always, on it. We, you know who I'm talking about. We've got to welcome our great producer who joins us, as always, is Stereo Mike. Hi, my name is Stereo, Stereo Mike. Mike. How are you doing? How's it going, lads? Uh, big fan of the show last week. I thought the way that it was edited and produced was was top notch. And uh, Ollie, well, I'm, I'm, no, here, lads, actually hilarious. I listened to it there in the car the other day. You guys are in fire, honestly. This could be <laughs> the biggest NFL podcast in the world by week four. Love you see, it. because of the Irish, first of all, again, flattery, like last week, will get you get everywhere. You but, yeah. Yeah, no, everywhere. But I also appreciate the fact that you flattered yourself in that as well, Mike, which I think was a good touch. Oh. Um, <laughs> but because it's said in your Irish accent, one can no- not know whether you're, you know, being serious. <laughs> something or not in your page. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Really? really? You, like, so you just can't tell if I'm being serious. No, like you think like there's, oh, okay. Well. I'm gonna to have to work on that, guys, for next week. I, you don't I, have to work on it. I like the mystery. I like the mystery, Mike. And you know what they say: the Irish are impervious to psychoanalysis, and I think the Irish are impervious to truly accurate understanding of what they're talking about in a good way. So I think you should maintain that mystery. You've always struck me as a man of mystery, stereo, Mike. Just the international man of mystery. Um, I'm, I have to say, and I know it's going to happen later on in the show. Boys, after last week's questions, I cannot wait for a millionaire here. I am telling you, I have sat for hours putting these together. And, Mate, uh, I, if any of these get past 32,000, uh, it's going to be it's going to be a big moment. Let's just put it that way. Wow. I'm absolutely buzzing because it's a bit like Ant versus Deck on Saturday Night Takeaway. I'm beating Ollie 1-0 in game shows so far where it's head-to-head, so I'm loving it. Ollie, how are you feeling about that there, sitting in the cheap seats? Um, well, we all know what happened last week. It was scandalous. Um, and hopefully this week, just, you know, the question master brings, you know, coherent, good questions for the both of us. To quote Ollie Connolly directly from last week, don't blame the question master. That's what I bring up you to you in court, Ollie, if you ever uh, were in that situation where we had to go to some kind of game show court. Anyway, let, let's leave that there. Before we get into our news of the week, Ollie, I just want to hit a few opening remarks. And we used to do this on the MS MCFS show before. And there's just a few things that have hit in my head, and I want to roll these out to you and Mike and see how you feel about them. First of all, why is everything toasted, Ollie? Do you know the history of toasting is that people used to toast bread to make it last longer? So in a little bit, it's an impoverished 
way of stretching a foodstuff, which is a noble quest, of course. But why must everybody ask me if I want something toasted? Why can't we just have fresh bread? Ollie, what happened to fresh bread, my friend? Uh, you you seem to uh, poo the concept. Uh, one could suggest it was more of an evolution than it was a necessity. It's like, oh, we've discovered we can do this better. Um, I, for one, uh, listeners may be aware, I need crunch in my palate at all times. I can <clears throat> do any kind of slop. I am not a heavy liquid-based man. I need crunch. Um, I can't eat things like tomatoes, no crunch. So for me, having something toasted is a necessity over just the bread. Mike? Sorry, I was actually getting the modern code for a member of the uh, company. <laughs> Forget it, Mike. Uh, that, that's <laughs> a general excuse. Uh, toast, I, as, as we say over here, it's my lum toast. I like toast. Okay, right. <laughs> a regular saying. Of course, we've all heard that saying before. Um, I'm going to hit you with two more things before I move on to News of the Week. First of all, there's a guy who plays football for Leicester City called Dewsbury Hall. It's a double barreled surname. I watch Match of the Day if you're not a football fan, soccer in this country. That's what it is. Uh, and the commentator in a wonderful voice when he got the ball went, Dewsbury Hall. And I just thought that was wonderful. Please check that out if, you, if you've got the time. And secondly, Ollie. There was a wonderful, and this is going to seem like a strange thing to say, carbon monoxide awareness advert I saw on telly this week. Okay. And it essentially said that, you know, carbon monoxide can kill. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I identified, this is truly traumatic, uh, but also bonkers at the same time, is that barbecues produce carbon monoxide, of course. So it had this little animation, and this was on before the watershed, so kids could be watching this, said barbecues make it. So never, ever take your barbecue inside and it's this animation of a person dragging a barbecue not into a house ollie into a tent <laughs> who takes a barbecue after it's been lit and drags it into a fabric tent mm -hmm. some sort of sausage hot boxing type situation <laughs> like um yeah i, I mean i, I th what, thought where you're going there was maybe in the garage a man in a garage i could see someone doing that someone falling for that old chestnut um in a tent seems <laughs> it's, it's, it seems like the most hazardous situation known to man it certainly does ollie i tell you what it's time let's get to the news So the news, as always, my good chum, we're going to hit NFL news and mix in some nonsense news just to add a little bit of flavour, which you like to do, so long as it's not tomato ketchup. We established that several weeks ago. Now, the first story and the big one that we're going to go to this week on is around Zach Wilson, who went down with a knee injury, feared it could be the important ones in the middle of the knee, but turned out not to be. And it seems like surgery that has already taken place went better than expected. So... It seems like the Zach Wilson show is still on, but Joe Flacco's the backup. And in week one, they play the Ravens. This whole story is interesting, Ollie, but I'm glad to hear that Wilson is okay. Yeah, absolutely. That's that's the main thing. I will say that, yeah, I'm not a Zach Wilson guy. I, I don't believe in, the, in any sort of Zach Wilson hype train. I, I think Jets fans have been very, very confident about the pieces that have been constructed around them. They've redone that offensive line in a really impressive way. They have tons of playmakers all over the field, and, and they thought this was the time where last year was the growing pain season, right? You throw the completely undercooked rookie out there, no expectations, he's terrible, but they baked into the pie the fact he would be terrible. And then when the second year comes around, you expect this giant leap because he was terrible the year before. Uh, that, that always confuses me. Um, I, I do think there's a real chance here where Joe Flacco is like serviceable, Zach Wilson continues to stink whenever he returns, say the week two, week three, and then they just say, you know what, this guy in it, and we go back to Joe Flacco. Um, we'll see. We'll see. I, I have very little faith in that offensive staff, and I have very little faith in Zach Wilson's development. And I do think that that kind of six-hour period where Zach Wilson went down, as unfortunate as that was, when it was kind of the stars were aligning that they would go and get Garoppolo, and that staff had all worked with Garoppolo before, and that was a really, you know, made sense. I think that team will be better with Garoppolo. It, it makes no sense from a asset standpoint of trading anything when you've taken a guy second overall and you, you want to give that guy a chance to figure out if he's any good or not. And Garoppolo isn't good enough to, to boot on that project. But this team will be better this year if they had Jimmy Garoppolo and not Zach Wilson. Yeah, I think that's true. But I've got the perfect show for Zach Wilson to watch while he's injured and laying on the couch. You know, we talked about Netflix-itis in terms of not being able to find a show. I've got one, Ollie. How to build a sex room. 
Okay, it's a new show on Netflix. Check it out. My wife and I watched the first episode last night. It's a mixture of interior design, psychological kind of counseling of individuals on the relationships and just kind of hardcore fetish room <laughs> construction and toy. Ollie, 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 it's fantastic. Have I have I kind of piqued your interest, sir? I'm sold. I'm a, I'm a big interior design guy. I watch interior design masters. Uh, I watch that weird one where they put the goggles on. You seen that one? And they oh yeah, that's a good one. Uh, that's a great one. I'm in. I'm all the way in. I'm, I'm a big interior design guy. Um, I like the goggles show where they wear the goggles. Yeah, that's a good one. It's all virtual reality, so I'd be up for some kind of fetish goggle situation. <laughs> <laughs> Random news, and it only gets better from there. To be quite honest, university mm-hmm. criticised over masturbation PhD. I found this out in the world news uh, this week, and I will read it to you, Ollie. The University of Manchester, Manchester, up your way, has been criticised for allowing a student to publish a PhD in masturbation, the Telegraph reported. Carl Anderson, there's his name, out in public, said he embarked on a three-month timetable of masturbating to Japanese comic books and making notes on each session. It was necessary to be diligent enough to abstain from the milk and muesli of porn during this experiment, he explains. Conservative MP Neil O'Brien asked, why should hardworking taxpayers in my constituency have to pay for an academic to write about his experiences masturbating to Japanese porn? I think that is a fair question that we should all ask every now and then in our lives. Um, so it seems like a bit of a prude. Um, it is a part, <laughs> it's a part of life. Um, and why would we not, you know, take our highest minds to go figure out what the deal is? Let's move on back to the NFL news. Oh, Stereo Mike, your editing is getting hard this week. There's going to be no content left in the show. Just very quickly, but just add to that, we're not like that's a forbidden topic in Ireland. So I'm going to have to edit the whole thing out. I'm I'm joking. But yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I'm not allowed to talk about it. Right. Let's talk about it. Is that right? Wow. It's it's like the old days, you know, with uh, the church and stuff. Yeah. It's all good. I like it every week when we have a history lesson about Ireland. At one point, it was the obviously the lineage of Tom Brady and the Potato Famine we nearly got into. So honestly, mcfsquestions at gmail.com. Send us your questions, but send us your Irish history. We love to learn on this show. If we do anything on this show, we learn. Ollie, back to the NFL. Patriots have placed Malcolm Butler on IR. What's happening there, my friend? Uh, an injury, and it's a shame because his his return was kind of big for them. Um, he was terrible the last couple of years in, in Tennessee, particularly last year when um, it was just kind of all given up and the, the the athleticism has drained from him. But they they need cornerback help, cornerback depth. You start rolling through their depth chart, and once you go past Jalen Mills, the former Eagles corner who they brought in on the big deal, it gets to, to slim pickings pretty quickly. I'm a, I'm a Jonathan Jones fan, the the uh, the tiny little slot corner there. But outside of that, it's it's like I said, slim picking. So they're in they're in trouble this year. They they have completely recrafted that defense over the course of the last twenty four months. They play a completely different style to anything Bill Belichick's run before. They've tried to change the body types and certain positions. And there's just something about that team that you know there's the, all the weird stuff with the offensive staff. And you never want to doubt Belichick, but the, there's some pretty precarious stuff with the defense where they just don't quite look athletic enough in any individual department. And Malcolm Butler was not a great athlete, but he was a reliable player who understood what Belichick wants to do. And so losing him for the entire season, even if he wasn't very good anymore, it would have been one helpful in the room. And two, maybe there was something there and you could figure it out. And by week four, you, you put someone who's better in. Just pulling out the, the chance to have him in any kind of form or fashion is a, is a bit of a blow for the Pats. It certainly is. Let's skip back from the NFL to a bit of nonsense, Ollie. And this one's quite terrifying. So I'm just going to tell you this and then move back to the NFL. Man woke up to go for a pee to find he was in a coffin and had been sacrificed. Okay, right, let's unpack this one. A terrified festival goer says he was being offered as a human sacrifice to Mother Earth after he woke up trapped in a coffin following a drinking binge. Terrified Victor Hugo Miko Alvarez, 30, smashed out of the casket in Achachi, about 50 miles from where he passed out in the city of El Alto, Bolivia. He'd been drinking heavily the night before, and he believes that the indigenous people who offer everything from live animals and sheep fetuses to sweets and cocoa to the goddesses, believed they left him as a human sacrifice that some indigenous people are still making. Ollie, how's that for the end of an eye out? That's, that's, I, I don't think I've had worse than that, if I'm being honest. One more NFL story to close then, Ollie, and it takes us to 
Steelers wide receiver George Pickens. He has been fantastic so far this season. Deontay Johnson has said he's a freak. That's a special talent. This guy, Ollie, is already sounding like he is the real deal. Legit. What do you think of Pickens? Um, I'm a big Pickens fan. Um, has this height, weight, speed combination that would stand up with any of the top receivers in the league. Essentially, the only reason he slipped in the draft was due to character concerns off the field. There was some slight medical stuff, but mostly character concerns dating throughout his college career. He He was one of the most advanced nuanced players in that entire class and it was obviously a class dripping with wide receiver talent so it is no surprise in any way that he would come into the league and be kind of physically good enough to play right away he's mentally farther along than almost any of those rookie wide receivers so it's no surprise that he would he can be a really impactful guy from the get-go it was just whether he had some of the maturity skills to handle it over the the short medium to long term as now he becomes this household name that people like now you know about George Pickens, right? And he's going to become a big superstar. That he's that good, and that is the question mark of how will he handle those situations over time. The talent never, never in doubt. I mean, he has legitimate like five best receivers on earth talent, um, and so that's why the Steelers took the swing on him. So uh, we'll see. We shall. To kind of paraphrase Ice Cube in the Twenty Two Jump Street film, just like the enemy's Jesus, he's dripping in swag. Ooh. He's dripping in it. Uh, people really, really should replace me on this show. Okay, let's leave the news there, Ollie, and move on. And let's move on to a quick Legend of the Week. And in terms of Legend of the Week this week, Ollie, what about Malik Willis? Malik Willis, his first game for the Titans, it was a stormer, baby. Yeah, I mean, unbelievable performance. Um, some extraordinary highs, some really bad lows. Um, of of all the rookies, he was probably. I mean, Desmond Ritter was pretty good too in terms of the rookie QBs. The thing with Willis is this long term notion of when will the Titans eject on the Ryan Tannehill situation? Mm. Ryan Tannehill is really, really, really good, really good. Um, and so to just move on when you've got this really raw quarterback, you know, it's an exciting prospect, but it's also like, when do you actually pull the ripcord? And they have not really planned to do it this year. They want to give Willis a a full season of sitting and watching, but you watching that game, and I don't want to bog down too much in the details of the Titans offense, because there's there's a lot to get into with that. But Malik Willis can do so many special things athletically that Ryan Tannehill cannot do. And there's nothing right. The things Tannehill does best, which is get the ball out quickly. And he's an unbelievable deep ball thrower are things that Malik Willis can learn. And so that's basically the trade-off. And there's a couple of plays in there where his ability to move in space is so Lamar-like. Um, it's it's freakish. It's just freakish stuff. Um, so if he can become more of a pro-style quarterback, if he can do some more of the the um, the complex things that will be asked of him, I, I would not be stunned. I, I go back and forth on them. Their offensive line is terrible. They have a pretty quirky offense. I wouldn't be stunned if they were not very good this year, as they were not very good for a lot of last year, but the defense is unbelievable and the coaching is great. If they realize about week 11, week 12, it isn't happening this year, and they said, bleep it, let's let's move on now and try and give Malik some time at the back end of the, se- of the season. And he is so much farther along already with some of the more difficult-to-handle pro stuff than I thought he would ever be at, at, in, in week one of the preseason. Now it is only week one of the preseason, but it's it's a pretty great sign for his development. Certainly is, like you say, Ollie. There's just some things you can't teach, and that's where the really incredible value comes in. Just like they can't teach, no one can teach, Ollie, the way you look when you come on this show. Your hair, your clothing, your beard, everything is so perfectly manicured, my friend. No one can teach that shit. It's just too good. Special. Malik Willis of facial hair. <laughs> indeed, indeed. You know what, Ollie? I really want to move on now. <laughs> to the exciting segment that we've all been looking forward to this week, which is the game show for this week. And oh my life, it is the absolute killer game show, the world famous, the one that we all used to watch when we were teenagers. It's who wants to be a millionaire? Let's do it. Okay, Ollie, it's game show time. You and me head to head once more, baby. This is what I'm talking about. This is where we make names for ourselves on this show right here, right now, facing off. And I'm simply going to hand over straight away to Stereo Mike, who's going to be our Chris Tarrant. He's going to be our, um, 
what's the, the new bloke's name? Jeremy Clarkson, which he's, he's not as good as Paxman, uh, Paxman as uh, Tarrant was. I'm going to hand over and Mike, you will do a better job than Clarkson. I'm sure you will. Stereo Mike, over to you. Well, good evening to everyone watching or good afternoon, depending on your time zone. I like Jeremy Clarkson, the millionaire. I'm just going to put that out there now. Uh, here's the plan. I'm going to ask both of you lads a set of questions. Uh, I think there's 15. You go from hundred pounds to a million pounds sterling. Uh, if you're watching in the States, and uh, there's a mixture of both NFL questions. Unlike the show, there was a mixture of non-NFL questions. And I have, after review of the play last week, I have uh, went in to ensure that the questions uh, are good. I, I sound like one of those Eurovision guys where he's like, we're good to go and stuff. And like, <laughs> yeah, we're grand. Uh, so I'm just going to make sure it's all verified. But, you know, obviously at the start, like, dun, 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 like the, the, the easy bit, there are some very easy questions because I don't want anybody crashing out after three or four. Um, and that's the plan. There are three lifelines. Um, there is phone a friend. Your friend is me tonight. You got to phone me. There also is um, the expert. So if you, like when Clark, like if you ask Clarkson now the question, you can ask. Uh, so if it's you, Tom, you can ask Ollie or vice versa. And there's also 50-50, which I haven't worked out yet, but I got the answers right in front of me. So I will work it out on the screen for, for the answer. Uh you're saying ask the expert there. Is that a new thing? Did they always do that? No. And it, it was only asked, started, it was asked, only started it was asked the audience. Whenever Clarkson came back. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah. they, they asked the audience, you all hit the little number pads and you tried to all purpose and get the person to lose, you know? And I was, well, I would love that. Or somebody can be, you know, like Ollie, your your partner could sit in the kitchen and go, <coughs> oh yeah, <coughs> I should have done that. Oh, I um, or, or one of those things. Um, I did consider lads doing ask the audience, but I thought it would be, it, it, you know, I couldn't bring a hundred people into the Zoom call and start getting them in the chat and stuff. It would now, be too much. You just referenced there uh, the coughing fiasco. Can we touch on that just for a second, Tom? If that's <laughs> you, you, look, um, you, look, you look so serious, Ollie. Go on. <laughs> an absolute all timer. Uh, for people who don't know, there was a great scandal. It was on the UK one, right, where a guy sat in the Who Wants to Be a Millionaire chair, and as the guy read the questions, someone in the audience would cough on the answer. To get the answer, and he won the million, right? He won the whole thing, and then he got he got done for fraud. Ch Charles Ingram, yes, Charles Ingram, and he's a hilarious looking fella, by the way. Um, there's a great documentary about him. Is it on Netflix? I can't remember, but there's a great documentary about that scandal. ITV, ITV. Okay, now I say, well done, sir. Um, I I, I see not that they did not Google those answers, so they just did have the general knowledge to do that as a duo. Uh, yeah, and it, I suppose you go immediately, why doesn't the person who was coughing answer the question? <laughs> but the whole point was it was a collaborative effort due to the Morse code coughing. Anyway, yeah, I agree with you, Ollie. Hats off to them um, and a fantastic story. Go and learn about it. Mike, I want to give you enough time for this game show as possible, so please go ahead. And whoever does better here will get a present or a prize from Messrs. Ollie or Messrs. Tom. Who wants to go first? I'll let Tom uh, go first. Okay. okay, Tom, let's play Chris Tarn. Who wants to be a millionaire? Uh, no. Okay, first question uh, for £100. How many seconds are in a minute? Is it A, 30, B, 1, <laughs> C, 60, or D, 300? It gets a lot harder. Well, if it's looking after my children, then it feels like 300, but it's actually 60, Mike. F final answer? It, it is my final answer. Fine. Yep, that's correct. Well done. Uh, okay, for £200... What was Odell Beckham's number in New York when he was playing as a member of the Giants? Was it A, number one, B, number 11, C, number 13, or D, number 99? Um, unlucky for some, Mike, but not for Odell Beckham. It's 13. Final answer? Yeah, so I'm locking it in, yeah. Doo -doo -doo. <laughs> this is like whenever they ask of a tipping point. Um, correct, by the way. Drop zone. Yeah, of course that drop zone. All right, £300 question. We're doing all right. Some nice, easy questions. In the UK, the abbreviation NHS stands for National What Service? A, Humanity. B, <laughs> Honour. C, Health. And D, Household. Uh, it's it's Health. Locked in. Final answer. Because it was always when you watch the show, you were like, just freaking, just, yeah, do it. just get on with we it. Have, we have to do it. <laughs> I, I, get, I get it, Mike. I'm just, I'm, it's more of a, it's more of a, you know, when Chris Tarrant used to go, are you sure? Uh, do you do? Shut up, Tarrant. Go on, Mike. <laughs> and then somebody gets it wrong. 400 pounds. The NFL is made up of 32 teams from two conferences. How many divisions are there? A, two, B, four, C, six, or D, eight. 
Eight. I am attracted to the symmetry. It's eight. Brian Lancer, lock it in. Yep, correct. Uh, 500 pounds. Which team was the first to win six Super Bowls? A, Steelers, B, Patriots, C, Packers, or D, Cowboys? Super Bowls? Well, the Packers haven't won six Super Bowls. So what is it? Cowboys? Cowboys haven't. So it's either the Steelers or the Patriots. The Patriots relatively... It's probably the the Steelers. Well, this is quite a hard question, actually. <laughs> that, that was a uh, that was a uh, uh, immediate leap. How many seconds are in a minute? <laughs> that is a massive leap, Mofo. <laughs> Where's that come from? Well, Jesus look, you, sweat. I'm trying, lads. I am. How many seconds are in a minute? It's an all time. <laughs> Mike, no, Mike. I love it. It's a great. It's great. But just in order to get me through this, so I don't use all my lifelines, just give us an indication. Is it the Steelers or is it no, the Patriots? No, 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 no. It's in shit. No shit. Which team the was Boston the first to win six Super Bowls? Think. Okay. Think. As if he think. wasn't thinking before. Think, it's you know, got to be the Steelers. It's got to be the Steelers. Well, it's got to be the Steelers, logically. Because if the Steelers have won six, I'm pretty sure the Steelers have won six. Ollie, don't give me that look. I'm going to kick your ass, even though you're... A million miles away. Um, the Patriots, there was relatively recently, and there hasn't been a Steelers mixed in one with since then, so it has to be the Steelers. Sod it, the Steelers. Final answer? Yes. Yes, it is the Steelers. Good. Thank Good Christ enough. for that. Okay. Uh, again, I, I think these are decent questions. We're going for the £1,000 question. Uh, so uh, who, when I when I reach thousand pounds, are you then going to do these quest this set of questions with Ollie in terms of this value, or are you going to carry on with I, me? I'm just going to go with you and then go with him after if you want. Uh, who I remember you could flee lifelines. Who was the NFL commissioner before Roger Goodell? Was it A. Paul Tagman, B. Paul Tagliabue, C. Paul Treaty, or D. Paul Terrigan? B. Paul Tagliabue. Final answer locked in. Boom. You've got a thousand pounds. Cue the music that I'm going to find. Yes. So I, I've not completely embarrassed myself. That's the main thing. Even though Ollie is continually, I think, trying to put me off with his glances. Please continue, Mike. So I want to make sure there's enough, there's enough time for me to kind of make Ollie feel bad and disrupt him as well. Ollie will be fine. After last week, I have to make sure his questions are at least the same as yours. Don't worry. Um, in so this is for two thousand pounds in the year two thousand, a long time ago now. Which country joined the rugby union's five nations championship to make it the six nations? Was it A. Georgia, B. Ireland, C. Italy, or D. Spain? You added such there was such um, feeling Ireland. behind the word Ireland as well, which was fantastic. The answer is Italy. Locked in. Okay, I, I'm going to take locked in as final answer. And that is correct for a second there. I thought you were going to go Ireland and I was going, he's going to kill me. Uh, <laughs> yes, you're correct. £4,000 question. And this is where it might get a bit spicy. Oh, hello. Which of the below players was selected higher in the 2011 NFL drafts? Jesus wept. Go on. Dun, 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 dun. A, Julio Jones. B, Mike Pouncey. C, Ryan Kerrigan, or D, Marcel Darius? <laughs> Jones, Pouncey, Kerrigan, or <laughs> Darius? Julio Jones. Yeah, but Julio Jones, there was the, the gazumping trade, wasn't there, Ollie, up to get him? So the yep. Julio Jones involved a jump. Can I play my 50-50, please, uh, Mike? What you have, you have left, you've got Ryan Kerrigan. And Marcel Darius. Well, so it's not Julio Jones. Then. <laughs> that you, you have to do the Tarrant thing there, Mike. You played yourself. Whenever the contestant says they're thinking it could be one, they play the 50 50. You have to keep the one in that they should have kept it in, shouldn't they? My bad. Yeah. Oh, I, well, I know this for your turn now. Yeah. Oh, this is good yeah, you just screwed yourself. Right. Who am I left with? Kerrigan and who? Marcel Darius. Marcel Darius. Right, I'm going to ask. I'm going to ask. I, I need. I, I want to keep going and get through this. So I'm going to back myself that I might get the next question right, and I'm going to back Ollie that he knows the answer <laughs> to this. So I'm going to ask the expert and say, Ollie, who was higher out of those two, please, mate? Marcel Darius. Was it? Okay. <laughs> right. I'm going to. I'm going to take. <laughs> My face. I'm going to this take content, boys. I'm telling you. I'm going to right. So this is this is just shows you that is freaking walk in the park stuff for Ollie. So I'm going to go provided he's right. Marcel Darius, final answer. 
Correct. And now I'm worried about all these questions. He's going to get the million behind or something. <laughs> right. Uh, let's let's pop on. You've hey, one lifeline hey. left. You can ask me. Mike. Yeah, Mike. He's going to need me at some point to get that million. So don't worry. I can uh, take him down, mate. Or I can support him. We'll see how it works out. For 8,000 pounds, what team has what team won Super Bowl X? The Miami Dolphins, A. The Pittsburgh Steelers, B. The Dallas Cowboys, C. And the Oakland Raiders, D. What yeah. team won Super Bowl X? Now, granted, before anyone jumps on me here, 8,000 pounds in real life on who's been in there. Difficult enough question. We're going, oh, yeah, I'm not sure. So well, I think this is a relevant question. Mike, don't question yourself. Your questions are impeccable, sir, and you've done a fantastic job. What I'm questioning is my knowledge of what is actually the NFL. <laughs> so I'm not questioning you at all. I think this is perfectly reasonable. I think if this was a general knowledge quiz, I usually would get to 32 with relative ease. So the fact that I'm struggling shows you that why I'm the host who talks nonsense rather than the <laughs> NFL expert on this show. So I'm going to have to use my other lifeline, which is something like sounds along the lines of cheat and ask Mike. Stereo Mike, what's yeah, the answer? Can I ask what, 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 is, that, is that what that one is? You get to ask the host a question. We're going to go I, with more cryptic. Well, like, yeah, it's right a, enough, because I guess in real life, Clarkson doesn't have the answers in front of him, does he? Yeah, so no, but I'm going to say, let's say, let's call this lifeline, Mike gives you a buy. Mike, what, what if you give me a buy. And what, then what, I'm on my own. What if you could just run along, ask your lovely wife who won Super Bowl X, and then you could return, and then we'll you'll be fine. Okay, okay. So I asked my Greek wife, who was <laughs> born in Greece, who understands cricket more than she does American football. Panathinaikos. Who won Super Bowl X? <laughs> uh, they're Aris fans, you see, Thessaloniki. Um, right, Mike, I want to play my cheat with Mike card, please. <laughs> oh, I can't wait to see how far you get after this. Um they're the team that are synonymous with Ireland. Um, it's the Pittsburgh Steelers, Ollie. Or Ollie. Tom, in my opinion, the answer is the Pittsburgh Steelers. Okay. I wasn't hey, alive to see it, but Pittsburgh no, Steelers. That, he stumbled onto a better format then. He should just be able to give a clue. Okay, right, Mike. We've got it. Pittsburgh Steelers locked in. It's correct. Well done. Um, well done. Now, you've, you've no lifelines left. And no. we're about to go on to the sixth. And I remember, you can walk away now. And, you okay. Know, you'll you'll drop down to the one thousand if you do get one of these wrong before you get to thirty two, and you don't want Ali going ahead of you. So just 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 think of that there. Sixteen thousand question. What year did the first Madden game come out? It was called John Madden Football. A nineteen eighty eight, B nineteen eighty nine, C nineteen ninety one, or D nineteen ninety three. So I'm I'm gonna stick. Because by the looks of these questions, they are quite difficult. And I know you will have prepared Ollie a set of good questions. So I'm going to stop and walk away with what? How much have I got? Eight grand. Eight grand. I walk away with eight grand. I buy myself a nice hot tub, get a couple of Lamborghinis in there, and it'll be fantastic. Now, let's. so that's what I'm walking away. I would have gone for 91. You would have went for 1991. It's the wrong answer. It was it what? was 1988. Now you I had a whole thing me. prepared at 32. I was gonna give you like a fake check and be like, but we don't want to give you that and all this. But you know, this is. Uh, can, doing... can I very quickly ask you the one million pound question? I was gonna say just for fun, you got to give him the million pound question. Go on, give me the million pound question. It better be a Simpsons question. In 1718, which pirate died in battle of the coast of what is now North Carolina? Was it A. Blackbeard, B. Calcio Jack, C. Captain Kidd? Or D, Bartholomew Roberts. Shit, the bed. Where have you got that from? I've only heard of one of those people. Bartholomew Roberts. It's Blackbeard. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Is that, are those ones real people? Because Blackbeard's the only, Blackbeard, Blackbeard's the only person I've ever heard of. Mm. You don't know. <laughs> I, know I was actually just checking over your... I okay. think your questions, Ollie, mm. first six questions are brilliant. You'd be sweet. And, now so I am I am excited, Ollie. You have eight thousand to beat in the NFL version of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. Mike, take him down. General knowledge stuff. I'm um, I believe that's why that's why I'm here, buddy. That's why we're the union. Right. I've got three lifelines. Okay, let's go. Okay, first question for one hundred pounds sterling. What makeup product makes eyelashes appear longer? Is it A mascara, B blush, C foundation, D lipstick? This is unfair. Tom used to work at Boots. I don't think that's a uh, that's a fair thing. 
uh, I forget which one it was, but it's Mascara, correct? Final answer? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes, correct. Well done. Which one of these teams does not play in the AFC South? A, Colts. B, Chiefs. C, Jaguars. D, Texans. Chiefs. Okay, I'm, I'm presuming we're not going to get the final answer, so I'm just going to take your first answer, okay? Uh, correct. 300 pound. Which one of these players has more than 80,000 passing yards? A, Tom Brady. B, Peyton Manning. C, Brett Favre. D, Daniel Aloysius Marino. More than 80,000, you said? Has to. Well, Tom Brady's got the most on that list, so if he's got it, then no one else must have it. I will go A, Tom Brady. Lock it in, please, Michael. Correct. Flying here now, aren't we? Absolutely flying. Right. I've put two 300 pound questions in, so I'm going to sw swiftly move on uh, and give you the easier question. 400 pounds. Since 2011, Brendan O'Carroll has played the title character in what sitcom? Mrs. Brown's Busty Bagels, Mrs. Brown's Boys, Mrs. Brown's Babes, or Mrs. Brown's Beach. That's A, B, C, D. <laughs> hey, he's rubbing his face. Um. <laughs> uh, I, I think. Is he, can you yeah can you reread the answers yes of course a is mrs brown's busty bagels b is mrs brown's boys c <laughs> is mrs brown's babes or d is mrs brown's beach I, I think it's i think i've heard of the boys but i don't know if, if it's i could look like it right <laughs> it i'm gonna go with the one that has the boys in thank god for that you will you will learn i i have no I, you will learn i have no life outside of football <laughs> what is the oldest nfl franchise in continuous operation with the same name in the same location a chicago bears b green bay packers c cleveland browns or d arizona cardinals uh in the same continuous location um i i think i know but just so i don't because i'm, I'm close to where i want to be i'm going to take the cheaty mike question just to get it, just to get it over the line. I, I know it's between one of the two. And I know Tom's doing his little winky eyebrows, which is in, tipping it towards the Packers, which is probably correct. But I'm, I'm going to take the cheaty Mike one just, just to make sure I get myself into the next tier. Um. Okay. No problem. Uh, I'm, I'm glad to do this for you. Uh, it's the Packers, Ollie. Yeah. I should. Well, so. I thought weren't the Chicago Bears once the Chicago Staleys or something like that. Yeah. Anyway, carry on. Yep. Let's keep going. I will check the answer, but yes. It's a bit like last week again. Thousand pound. What were the New York Jets originally or formerly known as at the start of their existence? And I'm realizing this might not be a thousand pound question, but we'll go for it anyway. <laughs> the A, A, New York Pretzels, B, New York Admirals, C, New York Titans, or D, <laughs> New York Aristocrats. Wow. That, that's a oh. that's a question that is yeah i should have sorry i should have put that forward a couple and i thought it was easy but that obviously it's like... easy because i can see the answer stop, stop apologizing <laughs> mike i've told you this before yeah, I, stop I apologizing will, i will say if a guy's born in the 90s there's an awful lot of pre-merger questions to come up from mike's trivia <laughs> <laughs> i think it's me trying to develop my knowledge oh yes yeah. of course the new york jets you, formerly you're hardcore course, into, yeah. into the, the 1936 new york knickerbockers <laughs> franchises what you're into uh can i go 50 50 to at least we don't. Then, yeah. New York Pretzels, A. New York Titans, C. That doesn't help me in the slightest. <laughs> so just just to confirm the two answers that remain for an mm -hmm. NFL team, I think in the early 50s, the New York Pretzels mm -hmm. or the New York Titans? Mm -hmm. uh, well, the latter sounds more like a football team, but the former is more in keeping with the city, but I will go with the Titans. Correct. Thank God. Dun, 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 dun. Okay. Okay. New York Pretzels would be a good name. Yeah, they call themselves the Titans, Ollie, but they never actually decided to go with the name. They thought the Jets would be more in line with the Mets. There you Wait, go. so they never played it down as the Titans? They originally were formed as the Titans, or the Titans of New York originally. And then they thought, do you know what? We'll call them the Jets. Hey. See, that's good trivia, and I'm glad that I know that because I'm going to drop that in some kind of radio sound. <laughs> I'll be listening to you and Robert Mayers next month. Did you know it's Titans? <laughs> uh, that is a ludicrous thousand pound question. They never played a down as the team. <laughs> oh, God. Okay, okay. Well, you've got what? You've got one lifeline. That you, I'm telling you, 
I think yeah. you could do this. I think it's yeah. it's neck and neck right now. I think it is. Uh, I'm telling you, like two thousand pound question. The problem is, the problem is, Mike. His lifeline is now me. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. let's you hope we won't need you. You like the league in rushing in 1927. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, 1927. The the Acme Packers. <laughs> For two thousand pounds, which NFL team features a helmet logo on only one side of their helmet? A. Ugh. Patriots. B. Steelers. C. Cowboys. D. Dolphins. Oh, um, Steelers. Fuck it Correct. Is. See, I'm telling you, I knew you get, I knew you get this. Four thousand pound question. There are twenty-two players on the field during an NFL game. How many officials are assigned to each game? A, four, B, five, C, six, or D, seven? They changed this last season, didn't they? Oh, sweet Jesus, did they? Yeah. Because this could be a data question. Okay, well, we'll we'll see. We'll see. Okay. No. I'll I'll look it up now in the background, Mike, just to make sure. On-field officials. I think they added one last year. Oh, and then one would make it seven. That's why there's a. Are you happy with the? Are you happy with the answer, seven? Um. Yeah. Tom's not going. Well, Tom's looking it up. Um, I'm pretty confident they added one, and none of the other answers were uneven numbers. Correct. Yeah, we had four, five, six, and seven. Five. You'd have five. I think it's. I think it's seven. It is seven. Yeah, it is. Referee, yeah. umpire, down judge, line judge, field judge, side judge, back judge, judge dread. That would be eight. No, now, seven. Now this might be a good question. Like we'll we'll go back to the thousand pound question, and we'll 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 hurry this up. Don't worry. But this might make up for it because I just realised now that you lads have got keyboards in front of you. So the eight thousand pound question. <laughs> Which of these words? <laughs> can be typed on a single row of a standard UK QWERTY keyboard? Is it A, cheese, B, pork, C, lager, or D, salad? Look at him on the keyboard. I can see wait, Oliver calling on the keyboard. Wait, 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 wait. You're saying it can be typed out in, in a row? So, yeah, which of the words can be typed on a single row of a standard UK? Oh, single row. Okay, so not in order. Okay, yeah. Read them again, Mike. <laughs> Cheese is A, B is yeah. pork, C is lager, and D is salad. What was this? Okay, so uh, I- I'm gonna, just going to hazard a guess that it's salad. Cheat. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I don't think about the keyboard, lads. Oh, come on. Hey. Oh, God. <laughs> right. So hold on. You got the 16, Tom, yeah? Mm-hmm. No, I only got eight. Ooh, no, I oh, oh. So what oh, is this? Man, is this for 16? This is for 16. Question. Four of the first five picks in the 1989 NFL draft, Troy Aikman, Barry Sanders, Derek Thomas, and Dion Sanders are in the Hall of Fame. Mm-hmm. Who was the bust? Was mm-hmm. it A, Blair Thomas, B, Tony Mandrich, C, Tim Worley, or D, Rick Meyer? See, I know the answer to that, Ollie, but I'm assuming you do as well. Uh, I, I'm very honest, I blanked out midway through. I'm going to throw it to you anyway, because I, I like the idea you're going to have to beat yourself now. <laughs> oh, so no. I, I'll just listen to your feedback. Not here. <laughs> can, can I say, Tom, Tom, you'll want Ollie's answer for the next question. Believe okay, me. Okay, so I'll, I'll play along. I'll play along. Well, mm-hmm. the reason I know this mm-hmm. trivia in particular is because it was the Packers that yeah. picked him, and it's Tony Mandarich. It's correct. It's correct. Uh, probably a 64,000 question, my bad. 32,000 question. Here we go, Ollie. This is it. In the Bible, which land is said to be east of Eden? Is it A? <laughs> can, I, can I just openly say, I took this from a, Who Wants to Be Millionaire quiz, and this was the 32,000 pound question. Okay. Wow. So A, Nineveh? B, Nod, N O D. C, Nazareth. And D, Nimrod. In the Bible, which land is said to be east of Eden? As a man that has been the mass for the last 29 out of 31 years, I have absolutely no idea. Okay. I'm trying to remember all of my Catholic upbringing. Were you a Catholic upbringing? Yeah, Roman Catholic. Good times, good vibes. Great times. Wow. Great times. Give yourself. 
<laughs> this this household, this household is a Greek Orthodox household now, which is lots of candle wax getting spilt on you at Easter. You have to hold a candle and go to Greek church, and it doesn't. It has protection in terms of like a little thing that goes over it. But every time I hold it and I go to church, I get covered in wax. Not fair. No. I think you have to go for this, right? I know you don't have to, but oh, I'm, I'm, I think I'm... you. I think you have to go for it. Nineveh, a b nod, c Nazareth, d Nimrod. Because if you get this, you've got a pretty clear path to a million. In my do opinion, my, do you want my input in the form of a cough, Ollie? Uh, I wasn't going to say it. I was trying that wink I was doing was was unspoken. Um, what is east of n- not Nazareth? Eden. So east in the Bible, Nazareth. which land is said to be east of Eden? A Nineveh, B Nod, C Nazareth, or D Nimrod. Now the Garden of Eden. Is that uh, is that the bad one where shit goes down with Romans and um. What's his name? Judas, or is that the first one with the with Adam and Eve? Adam and Eve is Eden. See, I I I I've got a, a legit. I think I know what this is. So I don't think Nazareth was was around with Adam and Eve, right? Um, why? What do you think it is? All right, it sounds ridiculous. Mm-hmm. I think it's Nod. Genuinely. Okay. So my cough would be two coughs. <coughs> Answer B. Oh, oh! Is that was that the system? They just cough when the answer. I don't know, Ollie. I'm simplifying. They did. They, did. It was... they just coughed, but they coughed <laughs> too much, and then everyone realised it. It wasn't like they were like literally doing Morse code. Jaguar, would you like a bottle of water? No, no, I'm fine. Thank you, thank you. I'll be fine. Don't worry. So <laughs> I will, I will go with my good pal over here, who's never once led me astray, um, and I'll go with Nod. Final answer. Final answer. It's correct. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so that's just I don't care that I've lost. I got that right. Did Sixty-four you know that thousand pound just, question from just religious stuff, or was that a stab in the dark? Um, it just it felt right to me. Good instinct, mate. I have a lot of strange knowledge retained in my head from places, and things stick out to me. And I've heard that before at some point. Well, there's the opener to next week. Um, what defensive end? This is for sixty-four grand. Hi. What defensive end knocked Joe Montana out of the nineteen ninety? NFC Championship game. Famous, famous moment in play. A, George Anderson. B, Tim Sullivan. C, Jeff Mitchell. Or D, Leonard Marshall. Wait, read the question again. NFC Championship. Yes. uh, What defensive end knocked Joe Montana out of the 1990 NFC Championship game? Was it A, George Anderson? B, Tim Sullivan? C, Jeff Mitchell? Or D, Leonard Marshall? A. Final answer? Sure. And he said A, yeah, just to make sure he said A. It's it's D Leonard Marshall. Um, oh. but you still win thirty two thousand. Now I have to say I made the first three names up. So I'm very yeah. uh, happy that that worked. He's but, catfished yeah. you. He's catfished <laughs> you. Huh? He's catfished you. I had to because it was like Leonard Marshall. I didn't so I think it was the Giants against 49ers. But I wonder if that I'd never I'd never watched this game. I wonder if it knocked him out of the game completely. Like he must have been injured the rest of the game. Um right. The million pound question, Ollie, is mad, but to be honest with you, every other question bar one was NFL related. Terry Cruz, do you know which team drafted him? Who sorry? Say again. You know Terry Cruz, the older bocker. Yeah, 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 yeah. What what team drafted him? Was it the Chiefs? Rams. I think he went to the Chiefs. He went to so many teams. Uh, when did the Super Bowl start using Roman numerals? Do you know? Oh. <laughs> okay. Well, I don't feel as bad now. This is the million-pound question, right? In 1912, which German meteorologist controversially proposed the theory of continental drift? Was it A, Alexander von Humboldt, B, Abraham Ordelis, C, Alfred Weg- Wegener, or D, Edward <laughs> How do you pronounce S U E S S? Seuss? Dr. Seuss? Seuss. 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 It's, it's, the answer is Van, Van Hump. It's the first one. I'm sorry. Was this your million pound question? No, I reckon it's the first one, though. <laughs> I didn't shout Blackbeard whenever I got <laughs> uh, Yeah, okay, sure. Let's go with A. I'm afraid it was Alfred, Alfred right. Wigener. I told you, Ollie. What, what are you doing? <laughs> His name cannot be Wigener when he's from Germany. It has to be Wagner or Wigner. Or... It must be W-E-G-E-N-E-R. 
W E G. Wegner. 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 It is yeah. Wegner, Louis. Okay. Well, um, lads, I have to say I, I enjoyed that game. I think he's, I think he's done really well. Or I wouldn't have got past four grand. I don't think. So. I'm impressed, Mike, and well done for the questions once again. Yeah, questions. Amazing, Great Mike. Questions. Amazing. Until well done, Mike. Until next week, the quiz show is done. This time, Ollie wins. Let's make that one-one, and let's move on. So to round out the show this week, let's go to listeners' questions because that was such a good quiz, Ollie, that I think we should round it off with the one listener question we got this week from Will Davis. If you want to get in touch with us and send us your questions, send us your thoughts, they don't have to be questions. They can be your own musings on life that you want us to reflect on. So please send us anything, mcfsquestions at gmail.com. We love the user, the listener interaction, if you will. So please Keep them coming in. Will Davis, he asks a couple of questions. Which team has the best chance to go worst to first in their division? And now that each conference has three wildcard teams, what would it take for a whole division to make the playoffs? I think it would take an awful lot. Now, Ollie, what about first to worst? Where would you start there? First to worst, I think well, there's two standout candidates. You've got the Ravens, you've got the Broncos. I think he's kind of tipping the hand there on the second one too because th- those are probably the two divisions where if you squint close enough and if a certain quarterback's eligible to play, you could maybe make a case um, for those teams to have four teams in. The, the, the AFC West obviously has four of the most talented teams and you can do the math just right to get all four of them in based on their schedules this season. Um, so that's feasible though not probable, one of them probably misses out. Um, And on the first point, I mean, if I'm picking today, if I was forced to pick today who I think wins it all, I I think I'm all in on the Ravens this year. Um, I think I'd have them winning it all today. It's them or the Rams for me. Um, So, yeah, I think they have the the, the best chance to go worst to first because more than likely Deshaun Watson misses a bunch of time. Um, The Pittsburgh situation, I have no faith in those quarterbacks and particularly not in the offensive structure, which... um, we dug into deep on, on Wednesday's podcast. And then you're basically going head-to-head with the Bengals and just hoping for some kind of defensive regression, which is typically what happens. Defense is not stable year to year. They kind of scotch tape that thing together last season with a bunch of really good players and not a ton of superstars. And unless you have Hall of Famers at every level of your defense, it's hard to maintain high-end defensive production year on year. So I, I think that the Ravens are my favorites to win the North, and they, they finished last in that division last season, even though they, they won eight games. And I have them right now as my, my favourite to come out of the AFC. And you talked about the three from four, Ollie. Yeah, sorry, you said three from four. I mean, three from four seems pretty likely. I was talking about four from four myself. Oh, four from so four, yeah. Four from four is is feasible now. Um, uh, the AFC is so stacked. Um, I could see three from four. Three from four in the AFC West should be what is expected at this point. You could see three from four in the North if Deshaun Watson plays football. You could maybe convince yourself if you believe in Mac Jones and you think Miami's going to be good and they all win 11, 10, 9 games that they could maybe get in. I think less so do you find in the in the NFC, though. Having said that, the NFC North is intriguing because I think the Vikings are much better than people think because they fired their coach, but it's not a real true teardown. The Packers will still be good, but will they be 13 win good or will they be 12 or 11 win good? Um, and then obviously everyone likes Detroit. Um, so if Detroit wins eight, nine games somehow, a bit of a, a minor miracle season from Dan Campbell, could they get into in what is a really weak NFC? And obviously the, the West has three true contending teams as well. So I, I think three from four now, yeah, it's, that's that should happen in some places. And four from four is now is now plausible with the AFC West. It certainly is. Thanks for that question, Will. Appreciate it as always. You can find us all on Twitter, guys. You can find me at the underscore Tommy underscore more. You can find only at Ollie at Ollie Connolly. You can find Mike, Stereo Mike. You can find him at Mike underscore NFL. So please hit us up. Let us know your thoughts, mcfsquestions at gmail.com. Even if you've got a game show you want us to play, because if you've got a really obscure one, we'd love to make it into a bit of an NFL slanted version. Ollie, it's been fantastic to talk to you once more. Please enjoy your day off that you've got coming up, Ollie, which is finally some time off for you, my friend. Thank you. I can't wait. Exactly. And uh, I'll be looking forward to talking to you and Stereo Mike next week. So from Stereo Mike, it's goodbye. Goodbye. It's longer, Paul. <laughs> From Ollie, it's goodbye. Goodbye. And it's goodbye from me. Have yourselves a great weekend.